Good morning. It's good to be sharing worship with you. Like St Paul's, Apanol and Colaston, we at Woodseats Methodist are at present sharing the ministry of James Morley, four different churches in unity. Around the world, in all our diversity, we're united in having to face the pandemic. So unity in diversity is the theme of this service. We begin with a hymn that reminds us that the one God we worship comes to us in three persons, a Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I hope you will be singing at home and later join in the responses where they're indicated. Some verses from the psalm for today, Psalm 133, as they appear in Singing the Faith, at number 833, if you're looking at a copy. Behold, how good and pleasant it is to dwell together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon running down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has promised his blessing, even life for evermore. A prayer. Thank you, God, for the means that enable us to be united in worship, even though we can't see one another. We humbly claim your promise that as we gather in the name of Jesus, you will be with us. We come with many different things on our minds. Help us to set them aside and focus on you. May this time of worship draw us closer to you and give us a clearer sense of your will for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we share the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The reading is Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Son of David, she cried out, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon as in is in a terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, send her away, she is following and making all this noise. Then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this, the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, it isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's true, sir, she answered. But even dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. So Jesus answered her, You are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. You only have to look around this wonderful planet to know that its creator delights in diversity. Look at the variety of landscapes, coast and country, mountains and valleys, oceans and streams. You can add to the list. Then consider the variety of trees and flowers in our own country, let alone more exotic lands. The crowning wonder of creation is the human race. Of all the millions who have already lived, are living now and are yet to come, no two have ever been exactly alike. There can surely be no better evidence that God loves diversity. Sadly, we've made another kind of diversity in the human race that brings no delight. The difference between wealth and poverty. Those of us who live in settled, comfortable homes and those who struggle to survive on the streets or in refugee camps. 
those who are well fed and have full fridges, freezers or cupboards and those who are starving. Enmity based on difference of race or religion. Here our wonderful National Health Service cares for us but for many elsewhere there's no access to medical care. So look around our world again and you will see all these examples of difference that give God no delight. Now with these thoughts in mind, let's look at today's Gospel passage. Jesus and his disciples are on the move. They're passing through Gentile territory. They will be on foot walking along a dusty road when a Canaanite woman comes out and calls out for help to Jesus, who at first makes no response. She continues to follow them and the disciples become annoyed. There are two things against her, her race, she's not one of them and also her gender. For a woman alone to approach strangers like this would be frowned upon to say the least. But she persists. She just won't take no for an answer from the disciples and continues calling out to Jesus until finally he stops to speak to her himself. He explains that his focus is on his own people. After all, he was born and brought up in a Jewish family and now his first priority is his mission to the Jews. In the passage immediately before this one, he's had a bad experience with some Pharisees, which no doubt has underlined the urgency of this mission to his own people. But the woman won't accept this explanation. She repeats her desperate need of help for her daughter, which she says surely should justify her claim to be among those Jesus has come to help, even if she is very low down on his list of priorities. As Jesus listens to her plea, he sees beyond her race to her faith in him and a love for her daughter far more powerful than any fear of humiliation or rejection. She's more than willing to sacrifice her own well-being for the sake of that love. There's no more hesitation. Her daughter is healed. In this story, there's a mirror of three stages we may be able to see in our own response to those who are different from us and crying out for our help. At first, we might ignore them. When the cries are repeated so often that we can't ignore them any longer, we may set them aside as not our problem. We have our own issues to deal with. But if we really listen, as opposed to just hearing, we shall realize that however different we appear, we're all united in our need of food and shelter and of love. It isn't always in our power to offer material help, although together, by making even small gifts, 
we can make a difference. We can at least speak up on behalf of those in need to challenge any who speak of them with hostility. And because we live in a democracy, we can challenge those who do have the power to help. Our church garden at Woodseeds reminds us of God's love of diversity in creation with both flowers and vegetables. There's also a cross that reminds us of the supreme example of one who sacrificed self for the love of all who need him. It's an empty cross. Jesus doesn't hang there because he's alive today in all who invite him into their lives to join in advancing his kingdom where all, whatever their differences, can live together in unity. A prayer of confession. Father of all, we ask your forgiveness for times when we have ignored cries for help. Forgive us for taking for granted the many blessings we enjoy and neglecting to share them with others. We thank you that you know the worst about us, but through Jesus we've learned that you still love us and will forgive us when we come to you. Thanks be to God. Amen. St Paul, writing to the Philippians, says, Do not worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. As we thank God for his goodness, we're reminded of his love, which gives us confidence that our prayers are heard. So we make our prayers of intercession. We give thanks for all who work for peace in your fractured world and for all who work tirelessly to bring food to the hungry and clean water to those in need. We give thanks for all in our own country who serve us often at risk of their own well-being in the present health crisis. We ask you to protect them and bless their endeavours. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We give thanks for our local churches where we find an extended family rejoicing with us when we celebrate and grieving with us when we mourn, ready to help us in times of need. We ask you to deepen our experience of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit as we share worship through technology instead of face to face. Guide those seeking the best way forward for the church in these strange times. If any find faith burning low, rekindle their love for you. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We give thanks for close relationships with family and friends, for those who love us no matter what. We ask that those in any kind of trouble or anxiety may know the assurance of your presence. 
bring comfort to those suffering loss and the balm of your healing where there is pain. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We offer all our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before our final blessing, I just want to thank all who've helped to put this together, especially Richard uh, behind the camera, and of course Sue and John, uh, who've given us the reading. And now, a blessing. May we know God's presence wherever we go, whatever we do, whoever we meet giving thanks in all circumstances for his love and faithfulness. And we share together in the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.